Hi everyone, this is my first attempt to do a ring pour pearl pour thingy. And there's so many different recipes and so many different ways to do it. Most of them are Floetrol and water and um, depending on the way that you're going to achieve the pearls, either the top layer is thinner than the bottom or vice versa. And while I really should start off with something super simple, <laughs> I'm not. So these are the colors I'm going to use. I'm going to use um, DecoArt Extreme Sheen 24 Karat Gold as my like base layer with the thought that those will that will be the pearls that come through. And for the ring pour, I'm going to use, let me make sure you can see what I'm showing you. Because I always show the camera and then I find out later you can't see it. But I'm going to use Blacrylic Mars Black. And this is kind of their economy, like maybe the equivalent of like a Artist Loft Flow type paint, only way better quality in my opinion. Turquoise from Blacrylic. Prism Pour Pretty Petunia. And Prism Pour Waterfalls. So, because I'm using Prism Pour, I did modify some things. Just because it's a very metallic paint, which means it has a lot of mica in it. So, I mixed the Prism Pour first with just a smidge of this before I added any additives to it. Um, because you have to remember that Floetrol and all that has no acrylic binders in it. And so um, when you're using a paint that has, I mean, does have binders in it, but you <clears throat> know that as it sits, mica separates and all that, it's just kind of smart to give it a little boost. So the 24 karat gold I mixed with Floetrol, a little bit of water. I feel like my paint is too thick. So some of you experts out there might know it's leaving a trace that kind of dissolves into itself. Um, I mixed this a little while ago. There's some goopy right there. I'm gonna let it sit for a little bit. I just added a couple drops of water to it. Um, then after mixing the prism pour with a little bit of gel gloss, I have Tammy's, Tammy Anderson's Dutch pour recipe that she uses for primary elements. I had it already in a bottle. And so I just used it instead of straight Floetrol. I used a mixture of Floetrol, that, and a little bit of water. So it'd be difficult for me to tell you what my ratios are <laughs> because I eyeballed it. Um, but I basically just did what I would look for if I was doing a straight ring pour. Um, what I'm a little concerned about is I think I might have all of my paints a little too thick to do this type of ring pour. So whatever, we're going to give it a go and see what happens, right? Um, I have my little mixing paddles here, but I kind of don't need them right now. So I'm going to get a little wipey and wipe them down as we go. So my plan is knowing that when you layer your cup, the first thing you put in is the last thing that's going to be on your canvas. So it's ideally going to be your center. <clears throat> so I don't want a bunch of black just to be the center. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a tiny bit of black in between more of the color to separate the colors, but to not completely take over because black can take over. And these colors, while they're very bright, I'm sure they're going to dry a little darker. So I want the black to help create some distinction between the color um, without being the main event. I also kind of want to use the aqua in between. So I might use the aqua and the black sort of the same um, like I might put them in there more often, but do really small bits of it. I have no idea what I'm doing. So we're going to experiment and, um, yeah. So let's see. Um, I'm going to layer the cup before I put that down, the gold down. Oh, I should have done this. So I, you know, usually if you're going to mix up your paint, it's good to let it sit overnight. I didn't do that. I just, I didn't <laughs> mix it like an hour ago. I also realized I don't have a torch in here, so let me grab one. I really hope that I have enough paint, to be honest with you. But 
we're just gonna give it a shot. Um, I do bloom so much so I didn't have the torch in here. So I kind of need to see what size puddle this is going to create to know how big of a cup to layer. I know that sounds strange, but. And I can, it's been a minute since I've done like a ring pour. If you follow our channel, you may think all oh, this chick ever does is blooms, but I do other things. I just might have to search a little bit further back. In fact, I'm a big fan of a ring pour. I'm also a big fan of a straight pour, which I plan to do soon. It's just once you practice kind of an advanced technique, you kind of have to practice it a lot so you don't lose your momentum, you know? But that's kind of why we chose to do this collaboration um, is because some of us wanted to sharpen up some of our other skills a little bit. So the ring pour, pearl pour collaboration. I'm not sure if this is going to be the video for it. Probably not. Probably just going to be a practice video. But it should be fun. So let me layer my cup with you guys. This is likely going to be our middle, so I don't want to have too much in there. And then, see it's very thick. I feel like I have to concentrate. <laughs> it's been so long since I have done a ring pour. And my prison pour paint is pretty thick because I did that gel gloss, so I hope it's not too thick. It's not sinking, so fingers crossed. So I've watched a few videos before doing this just to kind of reacquaint myself. There's so many of you wonderful artists who do this on the regular and do beautiful work. <clears throat> I'm kind of deliberately alternating this green and black in there. Maybe I'm doing that too much, but we'll see. They're beautiful colors. So the reason why I did the gel gloss is because sometimes when you use something with a strong uh, mica base with too much flow troll, it breaks up the mica. So my thought was if I use gel gloss, it'll like act like a strong pouring medium. And then we'll have a better chance of that not happening. And so far, it seems to be true. So ooh, we'll see. But I would have liked to have tried that first on a ring pour or a straight pour without adding the element of this pearl pour thing in because then I feel like it's hard to tell if it works with the intent or if it, like if it, if it were to break apart, it could easily be the bottom, the pearl pour part, this part, sorry. I'm so focused that my brain is just fairly dysfunctional at this point. I feel like a cup, this cup is enough. This is only a 12 by 12 level one canvas, so we don't have deep edges to cover. So we'll see. Just splashed. I've always thought ring pours look so cool in the cup. Like, that's a beautiful cup right there. I hope you guys can see what I'm doing. <clears throat> I remember when I first did Ring pours for the first time it was on a tile and I was so happy when I finally got it to do what I wanted it to do. So some of what I'm pouring on now is just going to end up pouring off the edges. In fact, I really think I have too much paint. Let me scrape this out. I didn't even get my mat out in case I wanted to try to save some of this. I just wasn't really thinking that clearly, apparently. Let me get the rest of the black. I 
did muddy up that color a little bit just now, but probably okay. And I had every intention of finding my split cup that my husband got me and trying it out for this, but do you think I remembered to do that? Heck no, I did not. So now, oh, sorry about my squeaky voice, now all I have left is the prism pour. And this is probably gonna be part of what we tilt off. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get it in here. Because it would be kind of difficult to have this much paint left over. But that beautiful, beautiful cup. These colors are gorgeous together. This would be a beautiful ring pour or wrecked ring pour. Marble pour. Beautiful colors for that. Good balance of bright and dark. I do intend to do um, a marble pour with the Bloom recipe um, and a two-tone base. I even think I have the colors in mind. I just have it done yet. Sometimes I, I have all these great ideas and I'm just like super tired and I can't, I can't do them all, you know? I have to like write them down so I don't forget them. Look at that cup. Woohoo. Okay. Enough lollygagging. Here we go. I'm going to start high. Look at that. And then when you get closer to the center of your cup, then you can go back into the center. And now we are experiencing a little bit of mud, but not bad. There are still some distinct lines. Okay, there are some things that we could try on the edges just to help move the paint, and I might do that. We got a little bit of mud as it sat there, but look at how clean and beautiful that is. I mean, we're going to lose some of that, but... And because I just mixed it, unfortunately, we're probably going to have some cells. That's all right. We're not afraid of cells. And we have more than enough paint, I think. So let's just kind of go... We're going to lean toward the corners, but we're not going to go all the way to the corner because you don't want to just lose all of your composition. So then I'm going to go this way, bring the weight of the paint back. It is opening up a little bit. This may just end up being a pretty ring pour. I mean, who knows? We have some cells for sure. We definitely have plenty of paint. And from what I understand about this technique, mind you, I'm no expert. Um, part of what you need to get the pearls is to get stretch out your design well enough so we may have too much paint to do that but we'll see it's what we practice for right and i've wanted to do a ring pour and i've wanted to do a ring pour with color art for a long time so even if even if this doesn't for some reason work out the way intended it will still Get something off my bucket list here. It sounds kind of morbid, but you know what I mean. Get off that corner. I do have some a naked corner. Hey, we're getting pearls. Look at that. Hey. I like how dark and like mystical it looks. We are starting to get the gold. I think I might have figured this out, you guys. Maybe I'll use this for my collab video. Or maybe we'll just keep practicing it because this was fun. Let me know what colors you think might be fun for the next one. Okay, I gotta touch up these corners that are naked to bring the weight of the paint back. I personally kind of enjoy an off-centered ring pour um, it kind of looks like, like you peeked into space and saw a galaxy or 
like somebody opened up a rock and you saw the formation on the inside. I don't know, I just think it's cool. So, you're getting some pearls. Um, look how much paint. Don't cry, everyone. All of you who are very concerned about the wasting of the paint, very sorry. But it's better to have too much than not enough. But now I know we probably could have chilled out a little with the paint. So we're getting some pearls. We still have too much paint on here. So I'm just going to keep moving it around. See, it's still moving quite a bit. What you don't want to do when you're doing a straight pour or ring pour is you don't want to just like phew, um, because you will lose some composition. When you do that, you kind of want to ease it, maybe rock it back and forth a little bit, you know? So we, we definitely have a lot of um, air bubbles, but that's okay. I love how that um, turquoise green plays with the, the pretty petunia and the waterfalls. That waterfalls looks like a brilliant, almost fluorescent blue in this mixture. It's so pretty. And I know it's probably going to dry darker, but I love the way it's looking right now. I need to torch this, but I need to know that we have enough off of here where we're not going to have any issues with cracking or anything. So kind of over stretching a little bit now, but it's okay. But as we do that, you see the pearls developing around the edge, which is what I wanted. I didn't want pearls necessarily in the middle. I wanted them to develop around the edge. And what's kind of crazy is that gold is coming through some of these other colors and showing like, like almost like lavender. <laughs> it's kind of neat. Okay, I hope you can see what I'm doing, but I can't double check right now. And I have a goober in my paint over here. Boo. see. I don't really want to hijinx my pearls over there, but I do need to get some more of this paint moved around just a smidge. And I like the lines up here on my left, so I don't really want to lose those too much. Okay, let me set you down. I hope you can see because I need to get some of these drips and I need to clean my hands off and torch it so we can see what's going to develop. <sighs> I have so much stuff on my hands. Um, this is really cool. If you're new to acrylic pouring, ready to pour paints are really fun for ring pours because they're like almost the perfect consistency for them and the colors don't mix very much, at least not with all of them. And so when you're frustrated about trying them out, it's a good way to practice ring pours because they're almost like foolproof, you know? Because um, a ring pour is not super advanced like maybe a bloom might be for a beginner um, but they're challenging I would say next to a Dutch pour it's probably one of the most challenging for a newbie so let me get um, let me get a little wipey give me a sec and then we'll torch it we do have pearls developing I think they will develop over time um, make sure you're a little more centered. There we are. <clears throat> you know how it is when you have paint in your hands and you start wanting to point and stuff. So we have them here. My hands are filthy still. I'm just going to let it develop for a second. So I need to torch it. 
I'm almost afraid to torch it. I'm afraid that if I torch it, I'm going to lose all of the structure of the rings. Um, but there's a goober in here that I got to get as soon as I remember where it is. There you are, you little goober. Always have tweezers handy. And then another one. And then there are definitely some bubbles in here, so we need to torch it anyway. Okay. I'm excited. Like, this is a first for me. I feel like I went from doing all acrylic pouring type things and playing around with resin and doing tumbler art. And then when I got into blooms, I was like, okay, my to-do list for acrylic pouring just got put to the side because I'm doing blooms. And that kind of starts, it does dominate you, but you're, not you, but dominates your practicing time because you have to get it down and it it's, it's so much fun. And when you get a breakthrough, you don't want to lose it, you know? So, but it does kind of put a damper on some of your other things that you're doing because you're practicing. There's so many things now that are not necessarily super difficult, but like I find them being kind of intimidating because <laughs> I have not done some regular pours in a long time. So I like that we decided to do this collaboration because it pushes me out of my comfort zone. There's a few other things that I need to be pushed out of my comfort zone for. So, you'll see some things coming up. There's a dog hair right here. No one will ever notice that but me, but it's like underneath the paint. I'm trying to make sure I'm not giving more with my tweezers. But it's like when you find something in there and it's really in there, you kind of have to decide is it noticeable enough? Because there's a chance I'm going to mess this up. Well, we have pearls. We don't have a lot of them. So I think, um, I think more will develop, but we definitely don't have a lot of them. So I can either keep tilting or just say, you know, voila, this is what we got the first time. Tell me in the comments below, would you have kept tilting or would you just say, It's a good experiment, nice result, maybe different than intended. I'd love to know what y'all think. I'm gonna pause this for a little bit and see if it continues to develop. And then I'll bring you down for a close up, okay? Okay, so here's our close up. I think more pearls will continue to develop, but I'm gonna show you the dried result because I gotta clean up. But here are some that formed on the bottom. You see what I mean about like almost the purple? <laughs> I still really think this is beautiful. So even if my mix was too thick, it was a great first try. There's one lonely pearl over here. And there's some over here. So obviously the place where I stretched the most is where they developed. I just didn't want to lose this just to get more pearls. So I decided to stop stretching at some point. Here's our beautiful center. I think the prism pour did great in here. Look at all that sparkle. And um, I think Adding the gel gloss made it play well with um, even adding some Floetrol in. It held up and did great. I obviously have lots of torching bubbles, but I, I kind of like it. I think it looks like, um, like the side of a cliff or something. Obviously, cliffs are not blue, but I like it. Let me know what you think. Don't forget the coupon codes below for color art, uh, paint pixel designs, and various other things. Let me know what you think. Thank you for watching.